I'm already sweating. Yeah. We are just walking to our first GO bus. Uh, so we're taking that from our home city of Waterloo to Square One Mall bus terminal in Mississauga. And then from there, that bus will take us to Pearson to catch our flight. Through security at Keflavik Airport really quick, like minutes. Took apart our bags and completely rearranged them so all of our carry on stuff went back inside our bags. And then we had pre booked the fly bus to take us to Reykjavik from the airport. Comfortable bus, had Wi Fi, plugs to charge your stuff. Oh my gosh, it's windy. Now we're just heading into Reykjavik to find some lockers to put our bags in while we go find something to eat and get some last minute groceries. The weather's actually not too bad right now. I think it's about 13 and with the wind it's 10 degrees Celsius. Luggage lockers was a little difficult to find, but we got here. Uh, number three. Number three. Set a private door to pin and press confirm. Oh, okay, so. Ooh, yeah, look away. Yeah, I'll show prices while you're doing that. <laughs> okay. Open. So we just made our first stop to Bread and Co. I'm sure that's not how you're actually supposed to say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. And we got what we were told is the, oh my gosh, it's hot, the best cinnamon bun that you'll ever eat. We were told Americans and Canadians say it's the best they've ever had. And it's warm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got these crispy like outer layers. And then I'm pretty sure everything on the top here is powdered sugar. We were watching them make them and they were just shaking a ton of powdered sugar on top. But it's just so soft on the inside. And it's just like the perfect amount of cinnamon. I'm not normally a huge cinnamon bun fan, but these are so good. Mm. So we got, I don't know what this place is called. Viking hot dogs? That's my guess. Yeah. Um, so we got the traditional hot dogs. So it's got fried onions, onions, ketchup, mustard. I believe this is the mustard actually. Um, you can also get relish on it, but we didn't do the relish. So yeah. I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> it was a big bite. What do you think? That is a hot dog. <laughs> it's a good hot dog? It's good, yeah. Okay. It is a good hot dog. So, about those lockers, um, seemed like a great idea ended up charging twenty dollars per locker um, for the larger ones which dave and i both shared however there is a sign on it that says you know only one opening per rental do not overfill the locker and if you do then it might not open and then they have to come and open it for you and then they'll charge you however we made sure to push our stuff back as far as possible in the locker, past this red line, 
that they say that you need to pass. And we just came back to get our stuff. It's only been a couple of hours um, and the doors won't open. And now it's showing the locker as available. Our phones also aren't working um, in the sense that Dave tried to call an Icelandic phone number um, and it just wouldn't go through. So he's now gone up to the uh, restaurant upstairs to hopefully see if someone there can call the guys for us, <laughs> call the company for us um, to see if we can get this thing opened. I don't know if I would trust these again, especially too, because we didn't realize as well once you rented it um, that like you only got to open it once. So like you put your stuff in and you close it, like that's it. Um, oh, it just opened up. Dave must have gotten a hold of someone. However, I'm going to show you the place that we're at in case you run into trouble here. Explain the weather situation. Well, Dave, we're down here at the waterfront and the wind is really picking up. That's basically it. It's just, we're already just really tired and the bags are obviously feeling heavy. And uh, yeah, we're just walking directly into the wind and uh, it just feels like it's gonna knock you over. And that's basically what we got going on. We're just walking along the waterfront as we head towards our campsite for the night. It is called Reykjavik Campsite, I think is what it's called. And uh, yeah, we're probably gonna go have a nap because <laughs> it's 2 p.m. here and we've been awake for almost 24 hours and yeah could use a little sleep very clean and then over here you've got a couple more sinks and then there's three shower stalls as well also look relatively clean you definitely want to wear like sandals or something inside the showers but uh, besides that pretty nice bathroom We've been here for about five or six hours now and the wind has really picked up. I'm not sure if this is just an average Icelandic wind or if this is actually a storm blowing in. We've seen a lot of tents blow over already. A lot of tent pegs just kind of missing and uh, tents are just starting to collapse. Luckily we have I think 12 tie down points in our tent so we're really hoping that we don't have any issues tonight but you know time will tell it's pretty windy right now but ours is still not shaking too badly but we'll find out overnight it's supposed to get a lot colder and a lot windier so we stopped filming yesterday for most of the after like late afternoon early evening one we went back to our campsite set up our tent and everything and then took a three four hour nap but then um you know, we got up, we made some dinner, uh, we both just had ramen noodles, and then uh, we decided to head to bed. Now, luckily this happened before we actually fell asleep, but we were both lying in bed, you know, in our like base layers, all cozy up in our sleeping bags, and it was really windy last night. Um, it didn't rain like it was supposed to, but it was really, really windy, and there was like some huge gusts coming through and the tent seemed to be holding up, but then there was one particularly just massive gust and it just hit the tent and flexed the whole thing down till it was like almost touching us. And then you just heard this really loud snap and then the whole tent just collapsed on top of us. So we went out 
scrambled out, <laughs> putting on shoes and stuff. We located the issue, it was on the long pole, um, because our tent has like three poles, and the long one snapped right above where like the two of them connect. We had no idea what to do. So basically at that point, all these thoughts were running through our heads. Like first thing was we're never going to be able to do the trail because our tent is now busted. And then our thoughts came back to the present where it was like, well, what are we going to do for tonight? You know, maybe if we can't get this fixed, we'll have to go sleep inside the, um, like the hangout shelter that they have. Um, we'd have to go get like a hotel room. I don't know, the list kind of went on. So then we decided, okay, take it back again. How do we try and fix this first? So then I remembered that they always have these shelves with free stuff on them that other campers leave behind if they don't need it. Like leftover fuel, food, clothing, stuff like that. It's just less wasteful and someone else might be able to use it. And in this case, one of these shelves had someone's broken tent. So we were able to take some of the tent poles from there and we cut them and took two of the poles and used duct tape and wrapped it around the pole to create like a splint. And that actually managed to work. We were able to put the tent back up and it lasted through the whole night. And then what was even better, it was actually funny because we had set up our tent earlier in the day and there was no one around. And then by the evening, there was, it was really filling up. And this, this one group of guys set their tent up, like, basically on top of ours. It was right next to it. There was lots of other rooms. So we were kind of like, you know, could have given us some more space. However, they ended up being super great. And when they were coming to bed, we were telling them about our pool situation and just to make sure they had all their tie-downs in check. They actually had a tent pole repair tube, I guess. Um, and so they actually gave that to us. Uh, we did end up insisting on giving them a um, thousand isk for it. Um, they were just going to give it to us though. It was so sweet. Um, they had actually just completed the trail we're about to start today, the Laugvegger Trail. And they said it was tough, but uh, luckily they hadn't needed it and they were still hanging around in town today. So they were just going to go buy another repair kit with the money that we gave them. two kilometers weren't too bad because it was just kind of raining kind of how it is now but then the last kilometer we're at three kilometers by the way the last kilometer it was just teeming rain and it's just so much incline that it's been uh, it's been pretty rough um, it looks like the next bit that we have to climb looks a little more gradual and less rocky so hopefully 
that's a little better. So there's been a change of plans. As you may notice, we are currently in a car and not on the trail anymore. Shortly after that last video, the weather on the trail just deteriorated rapidly. It got super windy, super rainy, and it was just feeling very dangerous, especially once we started running into people that had turned around on the trail and were going back because they said it just wasn't worth it. The next section of elevation gain um, basically took you to like a plateau at the top of the mountains and it was hailing and just gale force winds times five apparently. It was just supposed to be incredibly terrible and it was unlikely that we'd be able to stop and camp at the first camp spot. So that would be 12 kilometers in. So we'd basically have to do 24 kilometers that first day. And there was just no way that we were gonna be able to do that. So we decided to turn around and head back to Lenman Lauger um, to the main hut area there. It took us a couple hours to get back uh, to the trailhead. And then at that point, the weather had gotten even worse. So the idea was that we would go back and we'd stay inside the hut. The hut, per person was about $100, $105. But since it was so cold and so wet, everyone else out there who would usually be tenting, like us, had decided to come inside. And since everyone was drenched, everything inside was just wet. And they were basically just selling beds, but they couldn't necessarily guarantee you where they would be. We went in there and we were able to find one free space for one of us to sleep, but there just wasn't a free space for anyone else. So I asked if we could get a refund, which they don't typically do, but considering we had literally just purchased the tickets for the hut like 10 minutes before, um, she did say that she could make an exception. So we still had to figure out what we were going to do. And the last bus that we had taken to get to the trailhead had already left for the day, so we didn't have that option of getting back to Reykjavik. Luckily though, there was still another large bus out in the parking lot. So I ran over to that bus and it was for like a specific excursion, but they still had room on the bus for more people. So I asked if they could take two more passengers to Reykjavik and they seemed more than thrilled to have us on board. And I asked how much it was and he basically just said, whatever you wanna pay, um, just make sure to tip the driver. We ended up paying, I think it was, 50, 50 bucks to the driver. 50 bucks. Um, so like 50 Canadian. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of time between when I spoke with them to when the bus was actually leaving. Uh, so Dave especially was still soaking wet for the entire three-ish hour bus ride. But we were honestly just so happy to be heading back to Reykjavik. And while we were on the bus, we booked uh, a hostel room so that we had somewhere to stay when we got back. So when we finally got to our hostel, we got in, we took out all of our wet clothes, all of the wet stuff out of our bags, spread it across the room to let it dry. We did bring food with us, uh, but at that point we were just tired. We, we just wanted someone else to bring food to us. But we searched online, found Domino's, ordered some pizza from Domino's, probably too much pizza from Domino's. We probably ate half of it and then just immediately went to sleep. I don't um, think we got up until around 3 p.m. the following day. And I think we went to bed around between 10 and 11. Yeah. So it was like 15, 16 hours of sleep. Once I got up after the 15, 16 hours, I just walked to the front reception area, talked to the guy, said, I'd like to stay another night. <laughs> and then we just fell asleep again. When we initially came into this trip, we had kind of set out that we had a very small buffer with bad weather or delays or whatever in order to actually be able to do everything that we had planned. The first day that we arrived, the day that our tent had broke, was essentially the start of like a storm. Leading into the second day when we started to do our hike, that was when the storm got even worse and that we were basically rained out. And then the day after that, another reason why we didn't stay um, at the trailhead was that the storm got even worse the next day. So there was just no way. We basically got rained out for three days. And now it, now today, the day after again, this is the first day that the weather is actually decent. It's actually blue skies. There's a lot of clouds. It's still kind of raining, but this is still decent weather now. So it's just too far past. We can't go and do that trail anymore. So instead we booked a car and we're going to drive out and we're going to just 
see some other sites, see some other waterfall. We've already been here before, but there's a lot of things that we haven't done. And uh, we're much better prepared this time than when we were here last. So we have a lot more rain gear, a lot more food. We have a tent with us. So now we can kind of stay a little bit farther out and uh, do a couple different hikes and it'll be a good time. Just explain to me what you're doing right now. Why are you boiling water in a closet? <laughs> are we not on trail anymore? <laughs>